Please welcome Hamad Chaudhry. Hi, I'm so excited to be here today with the live audience and hello to everyone joining virtually as well. I'm Hamad Chaudhry. I lead the product team that builds inbound solutions for FBA. I also have here with me Sung Woo Hong, a very talented colleague of mine who leads the FBA inventory management and strategy team. Today, we're here to talk about how we can partner together to drive customer delivery speed as well as increase sales for you guys, our selling partners. So let's get started. We have an action pack agenda for you guys today, starting with the evolution of delivery speed at Amazon and why it matters. Then we'll switch gears and go to, you know, what is Amazon doing to improve delivery speed? And finally, what you, our partners, selling partners can do to further improve it and take it to new heights through inbounding into multiple locations, as well as uh, optimizing your inventory levels. Before we begin, I want to start with, you know, please to, if you have any questions, submit your questions by opening up your Accelerate app and use the QR code scanner in your app uh, to scan the code behind me and submit your questions and we'll take them for the live Q&A at the end of the session. Okay, so delivery speed has always been a core customer value and key part of what spins the Amazon flywheel. What was true in the past remains true today. Customers always want faster delivery speed, lower prices, vast selection. When we launched Prime back in 2005, one of the first, uh, one of the first benefit that we announced was today, Prime shipping. It was a revolutionary idea at the time, and it transformed the way many of us shop, myself and my family included. We launched this benefit on one million items in 2005. For those of you who attended this morning's general session, what do you guys think that number is today? You can shout it out or raise your hand. Anybody? 10 million, we have a 10 million. Anybody else? 100 million. 100 million, now, now we're talking. <laughs> and <laughs> any other takers? Want anybody else wanna take a shot? Okay. More than 300 million items are available with free Prime shipping today. More than 50% of all of our Prime members' orders are delivered in the same day or next. This year alone, we have delivered more than 1.8 billion items at, the, at this speed. This is nearly four times what it was when we compared to 2019. This is amazing, guys. I mean, we're delivering at our fastest speed ever. But why does it matter so much to Amazon to drive customer delivery speed? The answer to that question is pretty simple because it drives better customer experience. I can tell you from a personal anecdote, recently I was vacationing in Mexico with my family and on our last day, I dropped my wife's phone charger into the pool. Now, not a very smart thing to do. Uh, before we get onto the flight, I open up my phone, I search for chargers on Amazon Vast Selection, I found one which was compatible with my wife's phone as well as, you know, was delivered on the same day and ordered that before the flight took off. As I reached Seattle and I was driving back home, I was contemplating that, you know, I have left my fate in the hands of Amazon fast delivery. I was preparing myself to, you know, spend the night on the couch that night. As I pulled up to the driveway, Imagine my delight 
when I saw a packet sitting in front of my porch. This is one of the many customer anecdotes. You know, this is a, this is a personal story, but this is very similar to a lot of the customer anecdotes that we receive every day. How faster delivery increases, drives customer experience. We also know that through our extensive data that we collect, that faster delivery speed have both quantifiable and demonstrable impact on traffic into our stores. It has impact on conversion, which lifts our sales and sales for our selling partners, and also reduces carbon footprint. From our data, we see that roughly when we increase speed, roughly 15% of 15% uh, uh, distance is reduced from our package from our warehouses to customer doors. We see a 12% reduction in middle mile touch points. This is huge efficiency gains in the supply chain, which not only drives, delights customers, reduces our cost structure, but also increases sales for our selling partners. So how has Amazon been doing this? How did we achieve this? To talk about that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Sungwu, who's gonna tell you the answer to that and tell you all about it. All right, well, Welcome again, everyone. So we're going to dedicate most of this presentation on what you can do to take control, improve your speed, and ultimately your sales as well. But before we do that, let's take a small detour. Let's talk a little bit about what Amazon has been doing to improve delivery speed on your behalf. So today, I'll focus primarily on three important things that we have been doing in recent years. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about regionalizing our operational network. So Previously, uh, what we have done is we have used to ship orders from any of our operation sites across the country to deliver it to our customers. But now, uh, we have divided the country into smaller, easier to, reach e easier to reach regions. Now we have, in US, eight interconnected regions serving smaller geographic areas. And in each region, we keep a broad array of uh, selection so that the customers can find anything that they would like to find as well. In fact, we are already serving 76% 76, 76 of our orders or more from in-region fulfillment as well. So items shipped from nearby fulfillment centers or delivery stations help packages get to customers faster and with fewer emissions, as Hamad has alluded to earlier. And beyond regionalizing our operational network, we also have a lot of work to do in placing products uh, closer to customers. Now, that sounds very easy, but if you think about it, we're talking about placing products closer to customers before they order it. So similar to science fiction, we're trying to predict, hey, which customers in what region is going to which order which product, and having that product already placed before the customers order it. So we use a lot of advanced machine learning algorithms to predict which items should be placed where and when so that we have the right type of products, right amounts of inventory in the right place at the right time. We are also continuing to expand capacity of our fulfillment centers to place products in the right, uh, in the right place to begin with. And finally, uh, I would love to talk to you a little bit about how we've been growing our same-day delivery network. So these same day facilities are smaller buildings closer to large metro areas, which ultimately decreases the distance to customers so that we can fulfill it uh, in same day, one day, even sometimes sub same day as well. The buildings are designed specifically for speed with smaller footprints, streamlined conveyors, which allows us to pick directly to pack stations as well. In fact, if you can imagine going from picking all the way to the outbound dock only takes on average 11 minutes in these same day facilities. Now, this is about an hour shorter than what we can achieve in our traditional FCs as well. We already have millions of products available for same day speed uh, through these facilities. 
And we're going to be expanding, we're planning to expand to more than double the sites in the coming years as well. So I, as I talked about, we've been investing a lot into what we can do, what we have been doing to increase speed on your behalf. But now let's talk a little bit about what you can do to help us to continue to improve the customer experience as well. So let, the most important thing is essentially placement, placement, placement. Just getting the inventory closer to customers is of utmost importance, which requires not just national availability, but also local availability as well. If you can imagine trying to ship products all the way from the West Coast to customers located in New York, it's going to be almost impossible to get that to the customers in the same day or sub-same day as well. So we, we, high, we highly uh, emphasize the importance of placement. Uh, and uh, not only that, just because as Hamad has alluded to in his story earlier, because customers love faster speeds and we've seen this in conversion and sales, we also find uh, that your products when it is faster speed gets discovered more because the search is much more relevant when it has faster speed as well. So today we're going to talk to you about primarily three things that you can do to improve speed. First, it's about carrying optimal inventory levels for faster delivery speed so that we can have effective sp uh, spread across our network. Second, it's about inbounding to multiple locations. And third, it's about providing accurate delivery and ship windows. And Hamad will be talking about the, the last two points, but I would love to first talk to you about what we mean by carrying optimal inventory levels for faster delivery speed. Uh, so as I have talked about earlier, uh, Amazon has already invested billions of dollars into our fulfillment network. And now we already have hundreds of fulfillment and storage nodes, including same day facilities to get the inventory placed co uh, closer to customers. And does anybody know how many, uh, how many zip codes we have in the US? Any guess? Oh, super close. Maybe you're very good with the postal office. So we actually have approximately 42,000 zip codes in the US. So now putting those together, having to serve more than 42,000 zip codes, having hundreds of facilities that need, we need to fill with, uh, with inventory, you can imagine that we need sufficient and optimal inventory levels uh, across our network in order for us to offer faster delivery speeds. The products with inconsistent and low inventory, therefore, are way less likely to receive fastest delivery speeds that we offer, such as same-day speeds. And we've seen that this has quantifiable effect when you carry optimal, sufficient inventory as well. Sellers who maintain optimal inventory for speeds of approximately 15% increase on average in unit sales over a four-week period. So, uh, hopefully, I've, you know, I've conveyed that it is very important to carry the right levels of inventory, but what do we really mean by optimal inventory levels? Uh, it's a very loose term and could be a vague term as well. So today, I wanted to actually talk to you about how we are looking to help you and partnering with you and partnering with our sellers in order for us to carry the optimal levels of inventory in our network. So uh, as you may know, in Seller Central, we already have over 250 tools available for you. We have over 3,000 videos in Seller University, but today I would like to just take a moment to take a pro talk about approximately four tools uh, that we are presenting to you, and many of you may already be familiar with these tools as well. And just first and foremost, we understand how difficult inventory management is, right? And we empathize with how challenging it is to play that balancing game of, hey, if you hold too little, not only are you not optimizing for speed, but you're also uh, potentially losing sales because you're out of stock constantly. But if you carry too much, uh, you know, we know that you run the risk of excess as well as obsolescence and other things as well. So what are we doing actively in order to try to help you finding that right balance between not carrying too much or too little? So the first tool I would love to talk to you about today is our demand forecast viewer. So in inventory management, I think, many of we, I think many of us can agree that having the right kind of demand forecast is one of the most important inputs into our inventory management planning. So that's exactly what we're offering you. 
So the demand forecast viewer on Seller Central uh, provides your projected estimated future demand up to 40 weeks, including a trailing 52 weeks of actual demand uh, so that you can see, you can make year over year comparisons uh, very easily uh, right there on Seller Central. So we use a probabilistic forecast model unique to each product, including inputs such as previous orders, demand volatility, seasonality, uh, as well as lost sales as well that we can see uh, in order for us to provide these forecasts to you. And not only that, because we're using a probabilistic forecast model as well, we provide you actually two forecasts, one which is what we believe to be the expected forecast, as well as actually a more optimistic view of the forecast in case you, in case you decide to double down on this product and really go after sales for this product as well. Please do note that the, if you do run out of stock, uh, the, accurate, you know, the, uh, the forecast also tends to be less accurate as well, which gives you another reason uh, why you should try to stay out of, uh, out of uh, you, which should try to stay out of, out of stock as well. Sorry, that's a bit of a tongue twister. So what about, what about restock recommendation? How much you should send? We, should also, we also provide a guidance to maintain optimal inventory and maximize sales through restock recommendations. Obviously, one of the most critical inputs into our restock recommendation is the demand forecast that we talked about. And we take into account other things, such as lost sales, storage cost, and replenishment settings to give you what we think is the most optimal ways in terms of the quantity that you should inbound and when to inbound as well. And speaking of replenishment settings, this is another critical input. Uh, and, may, and many sellers may not have noticed that we even had these settings in the first place. But these are critical inputs in order for us to provide you with the appropriate restock recommendation. These allow you to fine tune the recommendations for your business, including things such as lead time, case pack quantity, replenishment frequencies, and other supply chain settings as well. So we always highly recommend you to keep these updated periodically in order for us to see, hey, what is the appropriate restock recommendation for us to provide to you as well. And the third tool I would love to talk to you about today, and I think this is also one of those tools that just gets underutilized in my opinion, is replenishment alerts. So we understand that for many sellers, uh, you guys are maintaining a lot of different SKUs. It is very difficult to stay on top of every single SKU. So what replenishment alerts allows you to do is stay ahead of stockouts and low inventory by setting alerts, which sends you emails when you reach a certain threshold of inventory for that particular product. You can set the threshold based on uh, sellable units, or you can do it by the weeks of cover which is based on the number of weeks available, uh, based on the sales over the trailing 30 days as well. And last but not least, uh, as a special preview for those, uh, those attending Accelerate on person or virtually, uh, we wanted to introduce a new metric called healthy inventory levels. Now, this is a new metric to make it easier for you to see and track if you have maintained optimal inventory levels to improve speed. Now, you may be asking, is this, what, you know, what improvement does this metric bring? Because I think all, all of you know that Amazon loves their metrics. So how does this add benefit to you? So what we've heard is that it is difficult to look at all these different information disparate across all over Seller Central. So what we're really aiming to do is to connect the dots for you and make it easier for you to use by having a consolidated access to target inventory and performance, the demand forecast, restock recommendations all in one place in an easy to uh, access through Seller Central through the FBA inventory page as well. So we hope that this makes a lot more sense when you take a look at it all together, why we're recommending the way that we are and what the target inventory should be as well. So we'll be introducing this new tool uh, in the coming months uh, on their FBA inventory page. And we hope to stay, see a lot of you use, try using this tool and letting us know your feedback so that we can continuously improve uh, and, help, and ideally make your life a little bit easier as well. So 
On the, that really concludes the sections on carrying optimal inventory levels, but there are other things that you can do to also continue to improve speed as well and increase your sales. So on those points on how you can inbound to multiple locations to improve spread, and what providing accurate ship windows and, and delivery windows does for your business, I'll invite Hamad back on the stage to, to talk to you about those topics. Thanks a lot, Sungwoo. Uh, thank you for that, uh, you know, uh, detailed explanations on a lot of the tools. So as Sungwoo mentioned that in addition to maintaining optimal inventory levels, there are other levers you can do that impact or drive customer delivery speed, right? And one of the key, one of those key levers is inbounding into multiple locations, right? So historically, we have assigned most inbound uh, shipments to a single location closest to your ship based on your ship from address. Now that is done, you know, to reduce the the transportation leg from where you're shipping your inventory to where the Amazon receive centers are. And then once Amazon receives that inventory, we have been investing over the years in building our cross docking capabilities, which allows us to distribute that inventory on your behalf. Spreading the inventory into the network improves, you know, allows us to place that inventory closer to customer demand zones, the 42,000 zip codes that Sungwoo mentioned earlier, and increase, this, uh, increase the delivery speed for those customer orders. So however, when you inbound into a single location, uh, we can only, we can, when we receive those shipments, the, we can only send those shipments up to 30 to 40% of the fulfillment network. And this is because how the network has evolved over the, over, over, over the years, right? So we have more than hundreds of FCEs within our network today. And we follow like a hub and spoke model, right? So the hubs are what your receive centers are and the spokes are what the fulfillment centers are which uh, sends the customer orders, right? So when you send it to multiple receive centers, right, we're able to cover the entire, uh, entire network. Uh, it's just a limitation on the physics of how the receive centers are. It's just not physically possible to have enough lanes that connects one single hub with every FC within the network. So we really encourage you, and this is where we need your help, is we really encourage you to inbound into multiple locations when you're sending your shipments to us. So over the years, we have been investing in, uh, in making, you know, making that easier for you guys and providing that optionality to you guys where, with, through multiple inbound options. Um, I've looked at the data and you know, I see that a lot of you, uh, we have piloted a new feature recently on Send to Amazon shipment creation workflow. And I see that a lot of you guys have been using this, right? Um, which is on, uh, as you create your shipments, you, are, you, you see multiple inbound options, right? So there is an option to inbound into multiple nodes, as you can see on the screen behind me, as well as we also give you a, a single inbound option for cases where we understand that it is not possible to, uh, you know, or it is uh, not possible to split that shipments, right? So the optionality gives us, uh, allows us to expose a lot of the um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, within the network, like expose how you can further spread, uh, spread that inventory. And we understand that, you know, splitting the shipments adds, you know, cost to your, uh, to, you know, uh, uh, to your operations, right? So in those scenarios, we, whenever we, our mental model has always been that, you know, we, we're looking at the end-to-end -end supply chain costs, right? So we want to optimize from, when, from your warehouses all the way to the prime bins within Amazon uh, fulfillment centers. So we give you discounts and we share some of those, so we can share some of that cost with you. You can see the discounts under the multi-IXT option or multi-inbound option on the uh, as sent to Amazon workflow directly. And you, all you need to do is just you know, select that option when you create the shipments and adhere to those recommendations. So in addition to splitting your uh, inventory to improve speed, 
I, we know that receiving items as quickly as possible is important to you. It is equally important to us in order to maintain the right in stock level in the F, for the FP inventory. So we've been continuously investing in ways to make our supply chain more efficient. Uh, uh, we're also investing in better forecasting your shipments when, and, uh, and your, based on your shipping patterns, right? So we've been investing in machine learning algorithms, we've been investing in creating more and more signals so we understand where your shipments are. And one such signal is that you've recently launched is the delivery window workflow. Delivery window, it's an estimated date range when you expect your shipments to arrive. You, you provide that delivery window during the shipment creation workflow for shipments where you use your own carriers. The providing accurate shipment arrival information ensures that your shipments can be received timely within our uh, within the network. When you use our partnered carrier, we can get the same arrival information directly from them because we have, you know, in addition to the uh, negotiated rates that you guys can enjoy, right? You also get, we have better integrations with our partner carriers so we can get this information from those carriers directly. Providing accurate shipment uh, information or delivery information uh, dates helps us improve our labor planning processes, right? So we can, based on, you know, we know when your shipments are arriving, we can, uh, uh, we can use our, uh, we can prep our cross docks or IXTs to be ready to arrive those shipments. It helps us improve our capacity. We can better manage our capacity based on this planning, right? So we have better signals. We know what is coming down the pipe and we can allocate capacity based on what the inputs are. That helps us lower our backlogs. And finally, all of this, you know, helps reduce received delays for your shipments and for you guys. So it is extremely important that, you know, as you are creating your shipments to provide this signal and this data uh, to us. So with that, we talked a lot about today on what, you know, what Amazon has been doing to improve speed, to drive customer delivery speed, what, how you guys can partner better with us and we need your help to you know, further improve it, take it to new heights, um, and all the tools that we shared today in this presentation to help you do that. So we've been constantly investing in this area to make sure to make, it, make your life as easy as possible. Because at the end of the day, when we increase customer delivery speed, all of us win. We have better customer experience, better, uh, you know, uh, better cost structure overall, and that means also you know, better traffic, conversion, and higher sales for you guys. So one other way you can also, and we've had this marquee announcement earlier, I'm sure many of you have already uh, checked it out. If not, I highly, highly recommend that you, uh, you know, spend some time in learning more about supply chain by Amazon. It's one of our main marquee launches this year. Supply chain by Amazon is a fully integrated, simple, cost-effective, end-to-end supply chain solution. It helps, it does, it provides inbounding, you know, transportation services, warehousing, low-cost warehousing, and fulfillment all in one. So if you have not done so already, there are other sessions and uh, other information available online as well. I highly encourage you guys to check it out. With that, that concludes our presentation today.